right, guys, we are back. Uh, Sadie and I are taking a little break from work and renovating the new place to go out and get some camping in. And do a quick overnighter, do a little mountain biking, and enjoy some of the last, probably one of the last weekends of these fall colors before all the leaves get blown away. There's a, there's a storm kind of rolling in, low pressure system here, I guess right now, into tomorrow. So as people are saying, there's gonna be some wind and rain tomorrow, but we're hoping that uh, it's not too bad over here. So heading out. Got the bikes in tow and we can do some camping. And I also wanted to answer or share with you guys a little bit about one of the questions that I get asked the most, and that is how to find spots to camp. Um, we've got a few little tips and tricks, um, some apps and whatnot that I use that uh, share with y'all and uh, hopefully help you out as you go out and do camping yourself. And I figure I should just explain the truck a little bit before the questions come. So made a little switch up here recently. As you probably saw, we bought that fixer upper house. And with that, I realized that I needed a truck more than I needed a van. And as I was working on projects, I just, yeah, needed a truck to haul stuff around, bring tools and supplies, tow trailer, all that stuff. So we sold the van about a week and a half ago and I bought another Tacoma. It's almost identical to the old truck that I had um, prior to the Subaru, and I loved it, but the last one was a short bed Tacoma, so it was five and a half feet long, which made it challenging to sleep in the bed of without just leaving it open, so whenever there was bad weather or it was really cold, it was just kind of like sleeping on the ground, and so um, that's one of the reasons why I had switched to the Subaru, but now that uh, Sadie and I are married, she uses the Subaru most of the time, and I was using the van, and so we just switched it up. Got this Tacoma, loving it so far, and we will be using the Subaru still quite a bit for camping, depending on the trip, but today we are we're going, we're going to do a little bit of biking as well, and we got a new e-bike recently that we've been using to bomb around town, and um, we're gonna take that out and play with it, and it's got big fat tires that would not fit in the bike rack on the car, so we threw in the back of this thing, and we're gonna do that, so that explains the truck. Got this sweet new e-bike um, a little while back. Been using it to bomb around town. I think we put over what 100, 107 miles on it so far. This will be the first time off-road, so we'll see how it does. We're excited. Well, she's excited. I'm gonna be pedaling myself. <laughs> she gets to choose how much she wants to. Smack break <laughs> and getting the light ready since I don't have a headlamp or a headlight on my bike. And it's almost dark. Oh. <laughs> <That's> hard. <laughs> Thank you. The hardest part for her is balancing while I take so long to catch up. It's getting a little dark. Trucky. 
back over there yonder. Now's my time to shine. Whoever makes it back, it's dessert first. I don't want to. I don't have to pedal anymore. Motor can't beat me now. What's your consensus? Pass can the it, test. Can it, can it do off-road okay? Oh yeah, it was awesome. Need to soften those bad boys down a little. I left them way crash. too high. Didn't crash once. Street pressure, still survived. It's not too stormy tomorrow. Go up <laughs> for another rip. Dinner time. Brand new Dutch oven, not even seasoned. It's actually my first time ever cooking with charcoals. Our first time using a Dutch oven. <laughs> so she's getting us all red up. Yeah. And then what are we having for dinner? This is a very last minute uh, packing job <laughs> for the trip, but we had some stuff. We're doing a barbecue pineapple um, flatbread pizza. So we got some flatbread that probably gonna have to tear up a little bit fit it in the cast iron. And then we got bacon to put on top. We got jalapeno. This is a total cheater meal. Onion, yes. As you can see, it's HelloFresh. <laughs> Occasionally we <laughs> get, uh, get those ordered. And we had a few, so Pineapple. instead of going to buy a bunch of stuff, Yum. we just brought this. Barbecue, yeah. And some extra toppings. And cheese. So we got the coals going and put the bacon in. And it is cooking, but very, very slowly. So I'm not sure what the deal is. So we're making a fire, because that's something we do know how to do well. And then we'll put coals and the pot on it and hope to finish the cooking. So right now, our bacon is not quite done yet. It's been like, like 20 minutes. That is good. Mm. Mm hmm. It's worth the two hour wait. <laughs> Dinner took a long time to make. We are definitely not masters of the Dutch oven yet. We're gonna go to sleep, and hopefully in the morning, the weather allows us to go for a little hike or bike ride and just hang out. Um, either way, share a little bit about the um, finding camping locations with you guys, so good night.
Alrighty, good morning guys. It is about sunrise and it is already pouring rain. Well, sprinkling rain. The pouring rain is yet to come. Now I don't want to get out. Right. good morning woke up to a little drizzle and decided that we would just make a quick cup of coffee and some bagels and go for a drive um, there's an area that I think we might go to go hike to some lakes or just see some cool views so we're gonna scoot over there before this rain picks up like it's supposed to midday today and yeah try to get some walking in before we get too soggy then maybe come back find some trees and cook some breakfast Alright, we are still driving to maybe find a spot to hike. It has gotten quite wet already. But figured I would chat a little bit about um, how I find campsites when I'm camping. I've gotten a ton of questions about that um, on past videos, and so figured I'd touch on it a little bit. Um, admittedly, I am quite a last minute person when it comes to camping, travel, stuff like that. So I I tend to kind of just uh, wing it a little bit and, and you know figure it out as I go. But there are a few things that I have learned to help make me comfortable doing that and or to plan ahead if I do need to do that. So um, I think, well, first of all, before you even start planning uh, your camping locations, I think you should consider what type of environment you're going to be going into or capable of going into um, and then make sure that you have the right equipment not only to get you in but to get you out or uh, contact somebody to help get you out if you aren't able to if you get stuck or you break down or whatever so you know recovery equipment um, if you get stuck shovels saws um, trash and boards or come alongs winches whatever if you're going off road um, and then you know maybe a satellite communication um, phone or something if you're going out of cell service you might need to contact somebody so definitely have a way out um, and you know maybe bring an extra pair of running shoes if, if you uh, if you don't and know that wherever you go you're gonna have to figure out a way to get back out of but uh, yeah so the first first uh, camping type I guess that I'll touch on is boondocking um, if you haven't heard of that that's like urban camping I guess so city homelessness by choice um, which I've done quite a bit of on like road trips longer road trips if I just need to stop somewhere for the night or when I was in the van for a while I, I guess I did quite a bit of that um, and for the most part I think most people know that most Walmarts will let you sleep in their um, parking lots um, but aside from Walmart you know you can you can usually find spots in town that are you know 
like dark parking lots, um, either in 24 hour businesses that are open like gyms or grocery stores, things like that. Um, or else if you're going to be in and out outside of business hours, then just finding a business and, and parking there. And I've done that quite a bit and I've only gotten kicked out a few times and they're usually pretty nice about it. But when you're doing that, it is always nice to have window coverings. So, um, like the reflectix to cover the inside of the windows, just to block out light and also so that people can't look in. And then having earplugs or something to block out the sound is also a good call um, so that, you know, if there is traffic nearby a highway or something, you can just block that out and um, mind your own. But that's usually not my first choice of sleeping location, but it is nice sometimes when you just need a spot to stop. All right, and the second spot or um, type of camping that I'll do occasionally, not that frequently, uh, it's probably the most popular, and that's going to parks like county, state, um, city, national parks, and camping there. Um, generally speaking, those are um, pay to play spots, so you've, you've gotta pay to stay there, and um, some of the time you have to plan way ahead in order to get a spot, um, they have limited limited spot numbers and so um, that tends to be why I don't do them that frequently is because one you have to plan ahead which I don't always do well and two you have to pay um, but they can be nice because they, they will usually have a lot more amenities like showers bathrooms um, you know power if you have a trailer or whatever um, so they're they're a lot more cush than what I tend to do but um, if you are gonna be doing that uh, obviously you can you know just use Google Maps things like that to kind of seek out um, the different locations and plan ahead but if you are looking to kind of plan a route out there are some apps that are nice for that I haven't used all of them but the one that I've used the most this year actually we used it quite a bit in Alaska is um, the dirt so I'll show you that real quick so uh, this is basically you can do a map view you know of different states the country um, and you can do trip planning so um, this was like one from Alaska where you can pretty much put in your start location your end location and then if you have you know a certain number of hours or mileage that you want to do along the way your vehicle capabilities there's all sorts of different uh, um, selections that you can make this one's really nice there's there's a bunch of um, user feedback in here so people can submit campsites campgrounds and then rate them add pictures give you a bunch of um, just good quality information and so coupling that with the apps um, ability to make routes and, and do things like that kind of makes it a, a really nice one to use and it's consistent so you're not trying to you know base your your decisions off of like 17 different blogs or whatever it is um, from other people who um, added information so that one is really nice there is um, uh, I, I believe a free version I, I think that to do the route planning you do have to have the pro and they're doing a 30-day um, free pro trial and I'll add a link down below for that if you're interested. But the dirt is the one that I've used the most for actual like route planning and um, using real campgrounds and parks, things like that. All right, and the last one and the one that's my most favorite that I use all the time is just using public land to camp on. And I'm assuming that's what most people are asking when they're um, ask me where I find campsites. So that is kind of a big question, but um, if you aren't familiar, public land in the US at least is you know a big variety of uh, local, state, or federally owned and managed um, land that generally speaking has a lot of good access um, for camping. And each, each state and zone has different regulations, so I can't really give like a blanket statement for that but um, in, in a lot of state and federal you know like national forests um, you can go out and camp you know in a wide variety of places um, there's you know in the summer times a lot of time there's a uh, fire restrictions things like that so you do need to know and then in some states you do have to have um, passes for that uh, that that land you know and, and each one's slightly different so it does take a little bit of research but um, here in Idaho it's great we don't need that because it's public land and 
um, yeah, shouldn't have to pay for it multiple times. And so we can just come out and find a place to camp. And to do that, I use a couple apps. So the one I mentioned before, The Dirt, um, they have some public land overlays so you can see the public land um, regions based on a color shade. And then um, in those, there will be campsites that people have um, designated. And then it'll usually um, tell you what kind of campsite it is. So, um, you know, there's, there's like Poland. I forget all the different terms that they use in there, but it'll kind of describe, you know, if it's, if it's an established campsite or if it's more of a um, rudimentary setup. Either way, you can get some information. And then the app that I use a lot um, outside of that one is Gaia GPS um, Maps. And that one is very, very robust app. They have all sorts of different um, map layers that you can use and so when we go out a lot of times i'll have a satellite layer um, trail layer a topography um, layer and then public land so that i can make sure i'm on public land so i can adjust the layers of the map and so when i'm out you know in an area that i think is public um, and i don't see any markings i can just increase that public land layer and then when i go i can see the shades here and that'll tell me, you know, what, what type of land it is. Right here it says, you know, Boise National Forest. So then it kind of gives me the green light as long as I know the rules in that area. And then in areas where there's public land or private land, you know, it's kind of uh, more sporadic and it'll tell you sometimes the ownership or at least that it's not pr uh, public land. So you know if you can or cannot be there. And this is an extremely nice app for that. Um, when I'm not trying to figure out the land ownership, I can use the um, topography and the trails maps to, you know, find roads in different areas um, and then, you know, see where they're going to go, if they're going to be by rivers, creeks, things like that. And then depending on the region, there's, it seems like there's always spur roads that go off or at least turn offs, things like that, um, that, you know, whether they're shut down or they're just, they've just been abandoned over time, they turn into, you know, campsites. And so a lot of times I'll just pick a section of land kind of head out that direction, look for spur roads or campsites off of there, and then confirm that I'm on public land and just use it. Yes, yeah, so that's how I usually find um, the camping areas. Um, definitely be mindful of the topography um, so the, the elevation changes that you're going to be dealing with because if it is a shoulder season or it's the winter um, you might get snow like we are right now and so you're going to want to plan ahead and know that know if you're going to need four-wheel drive or not and then make sure you bring those recovery tools that i mentioned before and another nice little piece to have sometimes is um, just a, like a wheel chalk or some sort of block that you can use to level out your vehicle. Um, these campsites oftentimes are just kind of undulating and so you can find a spot and then you know put a, a rock or a chalk or something under one of your tires to kind of prop the vehicle to get it leveled out or at least an incline towards where your head is going to be if you're sleeping in your vehicle. When you're choosing a spot outside, depending on the season, if you're in a really buggy area, um, a little tip for that is to, well, one, don't go to the super wet spots because that's where bugs tend to like it, um, and especially mosquitoes. And also, if you are able to pick an area that's like slightly elevated and has a little bit of air movement, so like the wind catches it or whatever, bugs don't tend to hang out um, in, in those spots as much. So. Yeah, having some air movement can help deal with the bugs and then being near super close to water can also lead to a lot more condensation stuff like that so generally speaking i like to be relatively close to water that way we can have water for cooking cleaning things like that but just being mindful of the condensation and um, all the bugs that you might be dealing with All right, so that's kind of an overview of what I do. Um, definitely check out those apps that I mentioned, Gaia and The Dirt. Very valuable um, if you're not overly familiar with the area you're going, you are going into. And then one other thing that people seem to ask quite a bit is about the, the safety of it, um, specifically for animals, like when you're out in areas like this. And uh, 
overall, I guess I, I'm, I'm fairly comfortable in this setting. I've spent a lot of time outside around animals and when I'm camping, like I have, I don't think I have ever had any issues with like big game. I think people always ask about like wolves and mountain lions and bears and stuff, but they, they don't really bother you. Um, they don't, they haven't bothered me at least. And if you're sleeping in your car, you're kind of protected from that and it's never a bad idea to carry a sidearm or you know pepper spray knife whatever if you are worried about that and control your food keep it in sealed containers and if you don't want it near you then yeah just move it away from camp hang it up put it in a bear box bear container whatever it is but overall um, I haven't had many issues really the the biggest problem makers are usually the birds and the squirrels so they're usually not too bad to handle if you catch them before they tear your stuff apart but that's pretty much it if you have any other tips definitely add them in the comments below but for now i'm gonna try not to slide off the road here because we are getting our first snow of the year and i am testing this new truck's four-wheel drive out see how it does and maybe we'll go hiking if you feel like it bit more snowy than I was anticipating so we might not stay here very long might uh, drive back down but before we do we're gonna try taking the e-bike for a rip see if we can't crash it in the snow Put a helmet on for this one. See what you got. All right, I hope those tips helped you guys a little bit. Um, really the biggest thing I think is just to uh, take a little chip off at a time, um, start small, camp in your yard, whatever, go to a local state park or something close by and then uh, slowly edge your way out there and you'll realize, I'm sure, that it's not as scary or unattainable as you might think. And it's quite a lot of fun. So, hope you guys enjoyed. We're gonna head down before this road gets too piled up and we slide off. Thanks for hanging out.